Welcome to Lecture 4 of the Federal Bureaucracy. At the highest levels of government agencies are the political appointees, the presidentially appointed layer of bureaucracy that's on the top of the civil service. Appointees fill posts as cabinet secretaries, assistant secretaries, and are essentially not part of the civil service. Of the 4,000 some appointees, just over about a thousand of them require Senate confirmation. Many political appointees have ties to the president or the president's party and serve to advance the president's agenda through agency action. Presidents also use cabinet and secretary nominations to make political statements or to send messages about how their style of management or what their expectations are for the general government. Now the word bureaucracy does not appear anywhere in the Constitution, but bureaucracy has its constitutional roots. Article 2, Section 2 gives the President the power to nominate with, quote, the advice and consent of the Senate, end quote, the officers of the United States. It also tells the President to require the opinion in writing of the principal officer in each of the executive departments upon any subject relating to the duties of their respective offices. This section establishes the existence of the executive departments whose heads are nominated by the president and confirmed by the Senate and it gives the president the power to manage as the chief executive. Now the president possesses appointment power over the top layer of the executive branch. Presidents have an incentive to appoint officials who are loyal to them and who believe they are likely to pursue their policy goals. The Senate rarely rejects nominees, although if Senate support is weak, a president will often withdraw a nominee before the confirmation vote. Over time, the number of political appointed positions has grown, increasing presidential influence over every agency. And now every president enters office promising to improve bureaucratic execution. Jimmy Carter promised to create a government as good as the people. Ronald Reagan promised to, to reduce waste in government. Bill Clinton promised to reinvent government. George W. Bush promised to make government friendlier to citizens. And Barack Obama promised to create a 21st century government that would be both efficient and competent. Donald Trump promised to drain the swamp. And I don't know what Biden said he was going to do. But modern presidents often argue that they have absolute control of the executive branch as commanders in chief and administrators in chief. After all, the constitutional structure provides the presidents that they are responsible for taking care that the laws be executed faithfully which presidents interpret as complete control over the basic decisions of government organizations. Moreover, the Constitution gives presidents considerable influence over the bureaucracy under the Take Care Clause. It gives them the authority to nominate and require the opinions of the principal officers of government and the implied power to shape the budget and oversee the day-to-day -day operations of each department and agency. Presidents can also influence the bureaucracy by issuing executive orders, signing statements, sending presidential memorandum, telling departments and agencies to shift their attention to specific issues, and they can even delay the rulemaking process by requiring further reviews by the executive office of the president. Another instrument of presidential control over the bureaucracy is the executive office of the president. The EOP was established during the presidency of FDR. The EOP includes key staffs that report directly to the president on such topics as budgets, military, and economic policies such as the National Security Council and the Council of Economic Advisors. The EOP is usually considered the component of the bureaucracy that's most responsive to the president. 
it has the highest share of political appointees and Congress gives the president greater control or rich structure. Now the Office of Management and Budget. This is an agency that's within the executive office of the president with control over the federal budget and regulations. Presidents use the OMB to conduct most of the oversight. All federal rules must go through the OMB. They collect the budgets for all the government agencies. This allows the president to emphasize their own priority and policy goals in the federal budget that's submitted annually to Congress. Now, the centralization of these regulatory and budgetary functions is, a, is another indicator of the increased presidential power relative to Congress. Under OMB's review process, departments and agencies must get the president's approval before giving congressional testimony on pending legislation, making legislative proposals, or answering congressional inquiries about their activities. Bureaucracies come with some challenges and is essentially trying to control the bureaucracies. The president's influence over bureaucracy can provide some kind of challenge for the president. They, they do nominate the department secretaries, but sometimes these officials pursue their own agendas. Sometimes presidential appointees actually turn out to be poor managers and their agency is unable to execute its duties optimally. Interest groups also have ongoing relationships with agencies and often may try to shape agency agenda. This interferes with presidential priorities. The president is also sometimes in competition with Congress over control of the bureaucracy because Congress can uh, wield certain powers that they term as congressional oversight and we'll get into this more in later actually right now the Constitution gives Congress several tools to control the bureaucracy Congress approves agency funding as most require annual budget appropriations to operate uh, at the hearings on these appropriations, members of Congress can evaluate agency performance and may reduce funding if they are not satisfied. The Senate also approves presidential nominations to top levels of the executive agencies. Congress can also change the locations of the agencies or their structure. Congress may choose to place a regulatory body or commission outside of the 15 executive departments. Congress can designate a multi-member board rather than a single person to head an agency, which limits presidential control by allowing for a partisan balance requirement or staggered terms of office. Congress can check presidential control of the bureaucracy by limiting the president's ability to remove agency officials. In many instances, Congress creates statutes that reorganize agencies that do not allow the presidents to remove officials except for cause. Oversight. Congress has a number of tools for overseeing the federal bureaucracy, not the least of which are the individual members of Congress themselves who are free to ask agencies for detailed information on just about any issue. Often Congress conducts its most effective oversight during the authorization and appropriations process when new programs are created and spending is reviewed. Together, Congress and the President conduct two basic types of oversight. One, police oversight. Police oversight is when the two branches watch the bureaucracy through routine reviews. Congressional Spending Committees and the President's Budget Office conduct most of the police patrol oversight in government during the annual budget process when agencies make their case for funding. Congress and the President also keep track of ongoing agency performance through specific measures that are required under federal law. 
The goal of police patrol oversight is to deter problems before they arise or to catch them before they cause significant damage. Another form of oversight is triggered by fire alarms, in which the two branches react to federal government's response to urgent events, emergencies, scandals, things like this. Uh, for instance, you have the 2010 Gulf of Mexico oil spill or Russian meddling into the 2016 election. The media also plays a very important role in such oversight. They can use the Freedom of Information Act to gain access to documents the federal government often keeps secret so they can uncover a scandal before any kind of routine police patrol can reveal such urgent problems. I believe we'll stop there.